As Father Roger mentioned in his introductory remarks, today is the Feast of Pentecost. Pentecost is the birthday of the Church. We consider this to be the day in which the Holy Spirit came and took a group of individuals and bound them together in that one common spirit to form one body, the Church. And we've heard that story now in our first reading today of how the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were waiting in the upper room, praying over the course of a number of days. Not 100% sure what Jesus was talking about when he said the Holy Spirit was going to come. And then all of a sudden, something very impressive happens. Now the part of that story that often captures the imagination is the element of the fire. Divided tongues of flame came to rest on the head of each one of them. And so this image of fire is often <coughs> what we think of. And in fact, that's as Father Virgin mentioned, why he's wearing red, why I've got a red soul, it's red up here, because it represents the flame of the Holy Spirit. There is another thing, though, that was mentioned in that first reading that represents the coming of the Spirit, and that is the sound of rushing wind. To be honest, this has become for me the symbol of the Spirit that in some ways means more than the fire, at least for me, subjectively. In part because of something that I experienced when a good friend of mine was getting ordained as a priest. He was getting ordained as a priest, and the first reading that he had at his ordination was that same reading. The one of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came. And what was special about his ordination, though, is that he got ordained at St. Six Parish, which is on uh, Marcel Lorraine Boulevard, near Arne Barassa. And it turns out that that church sits right underneath a primary approach corridor to the North Valley Airport. So just as they read the part of the reading that said, and suddenly the room was filled with the sound of a rushing wind, a 747 passed right overhead, and you can hear the sound. You know, it just roared over. Everybody looked and thought, wow, sound effects, this is great. <laughs> We've got the rushing wind. Well, I called Air Canada and tried to get them to fly over to St. Louis tonight, but uh, they didn't agree. But nevertheless, in order to try and explain the importance of Pentecost, I do have with me another form of transportation that I'm hoping will serve as a useful tool of explanation. <laughs> a bicycle. You laugh, but you're going to see, this makes sense. Not as impressive as a 747, I will admit. But nevertheless, something which hopefully, and let's consider that image of air, something that I think will help us to understand what's going on in these readings. Now you will recall that in the second reading from St. Paul, St. Paul talks about two tendencies that exist inside of every person. He calls them the flesh and the spirit. Now he's not saying these to oppose them in the sense that it's either flesh or spirit. There have been people who thought that way, and so they figured, well, that means if I get religion, I've got to become all weird, you know, and I've got to forget about ordinary life. That's not what it's saying. It's not flesh or spirit. It's flesh on its own, or flesh that is animated by the Spirit, that is brought to life by the Spirit. It's either just flesh, or flesh and Spirit together. See, those are the two contrasts. And so, in order to help explain those contrasts, I'd like to invite my young assistant, who's doing his first meeting today, to please come forward. You can stand right here. Your name is John Carlo? Yes, okay. So, John Carlo, I would like you to stand just behind this bicycle. And I want you to press your thumb into this tire and tell me how it feels. It's pretty solid, eh? Okay, I'd like you to go over to this tire now and do the same thing. How does that feel? Push R. It's a bit squishier, isn't it? Yes. 
Thank you very much. You can go back to your seat. <laughs> the difference between these two tires is that this one is full of air, and this one I let all the air out before this helmet. <laughs> from the outside, from where you're sitting, they look the same, don't they? But try riding this bike. Try riding this bike and see how tough it is when there's a flat tire. Air is an interesting thing. It's invisible. We don't really know it. We don't really notice it until we can feel the breeze or we can hear the sound of the rushing wind. Or in our case today, all the fans that are sitting behind the altar trying to keep us a bit cooler up here. We only notice it when it's in motion. We only notice it when we need it. But otherwise, it's generally intangible. But that doesn't mean it isn't useful. It doesn't mean it isn't necessary. These two tires represent flesh alone, without the spirit, without the air, versus the flesh and the spirit together. That's the tire that is full. And just like driving your car or riding your bike with a flat makes it a lot more difficult, going through life just with the flesh and without the spirit makes life a lot more difficult. Life is a lot harder. The reason Jesus sent us the Spirit is to fill us up, <coughs> pump us up, you might say, in order that when we go out into the world, we are actually that much more effective and that life is that much lighter. Life is that much easier. This is Pentecost. Pentecost is the start of Jesus trying to heal the world. It's the start of Jesus sending forth that special ingredient, invisible, intangible, but definitely real, to fill the people, to fill all of you and me, so that we can ride out, ride forward, and life is that much better. When you read that second reading, I encourage you to take a look at it again. When you read it, you notice that St. Paul lists what are the works of the flesh versus what are the works and the fruits of the spirit. The works of the flesh is a pretty lousy list. Envy, jealousy, strife, quarreling, debauchery, drunkenness, all that sort of thing. G. That's a sign of what we are trying to fill ourselves with when we're not filled with the Spirit. When we're empty, we know that there's other stuff that's got to be there, and so we try and fill ourselves with garbage. On the other hand, St. Paul lists what are the fruits when the Spirit is there. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, etc. Some of these we see listed on our walls today, as a number of children have their confirmation today. And we're asked and encouraged to know about these gifts and these fruits of the Spirit. And so what about us in the church today? I know we have a number of guests here today because these children are making their first communion, and so it tends to bring out people from all parts of the city and our extended families. Today, the challenge is for all of us, how are we living? The tire that is our life, each of us is like a tire. Are we flat? Or are we at the right pressure? Do we have the Spirit in us? How does Jesus give us that Spirit in the first place? For this, I would like to explain particularly to the children who are having their first communion, so that you can understand what it means for you to be having your first communion and what it's got to do with this bicycle. Okay? So when you were born, each of you children, when you were born, you were a bit like this tire here. Okay? On the outside, you look great. 
but a little flat. That's how we're born into this world. But the good news is, we are born with a very special feature that makes us different from all the other animals in the world. That is, we're born with a bell. <laughs> this tire's got a bell. We're born with the capacity to receive God, to receive the Spirit. And so then what happens is our parents bring us to church in order for us to be baptized. And when that happens, that's the equivalent of Jesus taking out his bicycle pump <laughs> and starting to fill the person with the Spirit. He starts to be filled up. One day, you're going to be having your confirmations. What is confirmation? <laughs> confirmation is taking the little cap and putting it on the end of the valve so that the air doesn't escape, that it stays in even more solidly. So I can pump up this fire. That's the equivalent of baptism. I can put the cap on the valve. That's the equivalent of confirmation. What about your communion? What is that? I'm going to tell you. This spring, when I took this bike out of the garage and I wanted to ride it for the first time, this is actually my bike, you know. this is the one I ride. <laughs> the first thing I did was I checked the tires. Because I knew that even though I wasn't riding it all winter, over time, even with the cap on, even if it was properly pumped up, over time, there's still a little bit of air that sometimes gets out. And I knew that I would need to recharge the tires if I was going to ride this bike. Have you ever had that? When you first want to ride your bike, you realize you need to get the tires pumped up again? That is communion. For you to have your communion, that's like asking Jesus to pump up the tire again. That's like asking Jesus to come and to make sure that you've got all the right air in you. To make sure that you've got everything you need so that when you do want to go ride, you're ready. You're ready to get out there and the bike is not going to let you down. This tire represents you. This bike represents your life. God wants all of you have a happy life. He wants all of you to have a good life. Just like it's a lot easier to ride your bike when there's air in the tires, he wants to have his spirit in you so that as you live and as you grow, it's going to be easier, even better for you. It's going to be a lot more fun. Life is more fun the closer we are to God and the more we let the Holy Spirit into our lives. So for all of us here in the church today, again, coming from all parts of the city, coming from all walks of life, we are invited to the same thing. We are invited to let the Holy Spirit into us. And if we're asking ourselves how do we do that, the trick is to ask Jesus to show up with his pump and to give us the Spirit. We can renew our baptism through the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of confession. But even before that, it starts with opening our hearts. It starts with saying, I want to take the bike of my life out of the garage. I want to take the bike of my life and get a little more fun in my life. I want to start to ride and ride well. Not following that list of the flesh. All the drunkenness, carousing, envy, jealousy, stuff like that. But to say, I want the best kind of life. The life that is full of peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, love. That is the promise of Pentecost. That is the promise that God is holding out to all of us today. <coughs>